like the music we have. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to an unboxing of Magic the Gathering. I'm Brandon Davis, joined by Magic the Gathering senior correspondent Jamie Lovett. Is that my title now? It is now. News to me. <laughs> uh, we have the 2020, the course set for 2020. Brand new line, uh, some repeat cards, some kind of fresh takes. Sure. Uh, core sets are always kind of... Uh, Wizards likes to reprint some classic cards in these set and kind of use it to tweak the metagame a little bit. A lot of times uh, players will uh, kind of sleep on the core set a little bit because it tends to be a little more new player friendly. But this year's core set is actually kind of really powerful. Like it came out and suddenly there were like six new archetypes that just didn't exist before the set came out. So it's uh, it's made a splash. It's not for sure. as big on the Planeswalkers front as the recent sets we've seen. Mm -hmm. So nope. uh, War of the Spark we did last time and it had a Planeswalker in every pack. Not the case this time. There's the usual uh, one for each color, Mythic Rare and then Chandra because She's kind of their big character right now. She actually gets three in the set, plus the one in that shiny Planeswalker deck right there. So, and Chandra is going to be at the center of the anime story. Mm -hmm. So, all we're, I mean, we're, we, you can expect some Magic the Gathering anime news from Comic-Con next week. We'll be out there, uh, and we'll be talking to some folks both on the anime front and on the trading card game front. Mm -hmm. So, I would stay tuned if you're a fan of Magic the Gathering, and just keep watching because we have a 30-pack booster sets that we're just going to dive into, um, show you all the best cards in these packs, and I think that's enough talking. I think we should get started. Do it. Woo! You know, booster packs, like, back in, on the holidays when I was a kid, I'd be like, Mom, I don't want anything but a booster pack. <laughs> all right, let's cut to the back here, get to the action. Temple of Triumph. Ooh. There we go. Temple of Triumph enters the battlefield. Tapped when Temple of Triumph enters the battlefield. Scry one. Tap it. Add red or white mana. Yeah, so this is the, uh, these cards are the latest iteration of Magic's Dual Lands, which have, different versions have been around forever. Everybody who plays Magic knows it's really important to fix your mana base and Dual Lands are a big part of that. Uh, with the Ixalan block rotating out, we're losing a whole set of them. So this will replace them. The fact that they come into play tapped uh, is really interesting because that makes them really slow, which means aggro decks probably won't like them as much but the ability to scry means that combo decks are probably gonna like them a lot, and you know, control decks will probably tolerate them if they have to. All right, and shout out to uh, Steven Nelson, hello, Michigan. Uh, we've got a shiny card. Those are always fun, it's a common, it's a land, um, but that's exciting. And brought back is our rare, choose up to two target permanents uh, cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn, to return them. To the battlefield tapped. All right, so we're bringing some we're bringing some creatures and stuff back to life, maybe. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a card that got a lot of buzz when it was revealed before the set came out because there's already a lot of really powerful white uh, archetypes, particularly Esper, and now they have a way to bring back their powerful planeswalkers and creatures and all that stuff if you actually find a means to get rid of them. So it becomes even more resilient than it was before. All right, and we have a, a card straight out of Spider-Man: Far From Home here. Creature Elemental, Chandra Spitfire, a.k.a. Molten Man, but I, I'm just being funny. That's not from Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, here's our rare, another white, Hanged Executioner. Flying when Hanged Executioner enters the battlefield. Create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. Uh, three plus a white, exile, Hanged Executioner, exile, target creature. Ooh. Yeah. That's, but I mean, the combination of those two, I'm already building a white deck. Yeah, uh, one of those new archetypes that I talked about at the top uh, is a white-blue flyers aggro deck that just flies over everybody else's creatures and kills your opponent. This card is already seeing play in those decks because it brings a lot of versatility uh, and a lot of extra uh, bodies just because it adds an extra creature uh, when you play it. So, yeah, this is a good one that you'll see a lot if you're playing around the time this set comes out. We've got a shiny rare. Ooh, doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> Fancy. Night Pack Ambusher. Look at this guy. Uh, he has Flash. Other wolves and werewolves you control get plus one, plus one. All right, I'm sensing a theme that we're going to be seeing here. Uh, and at the beginning of your end step, if you didn't cast a spell this turn, create a 2-2 green wolf creature token. The pack is stronger together, one might say. See Indeed. Uh, so, yeah, there are talk about wolf's decks. Uh, there was a Planeswalker in the last set, War of the Spark, that gave bonuses to wolves. Okay. Uh, but this card is actually showing up in Flash decks, because Flash lets you play creatures on your opponent's turn. Uh, 
it's a really hot deck right now. It's really annoying to play again since they do everything on your turn. Then should you do everything on your opponent's turn, means you didn't cast a spell on your turn and you get to keep pumping out those wolves. That could build an army pretty quickly. Um, all right, Wake Root Elemental, creature I'm as a rare. Another green here, untap for five forests there. Uh, untap target land you control. It becomes a 5-5 five, five elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. Uh, so that's, that's, I mean, this is interesting. Yeah, it's expensive, but uh, yeah. elementals is another one of those tribal decks that are a definite thing now after this set. Uh, I don't know that this particular card has seen a ton of play yet. Like I said, it is kind of expensive and it does something similar to what the Nisa Planeswalker for the last set does, but for less mana. Uh, but yeah, Elementals is another, uh, particularly red, blue, green Elementals is something people are gonna wanna keep an eye on. So can you tap your five forests there and then untap one and make it a five five at the same time? <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, you can. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, had to read the card there. Uh, here we go. We're blue this time. Um, Leyline of Anticipation. If Leyline of Anticipation is in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. You may cast spells as though they had flash. Ooh, mm -hmm. that's solid. This is a cycle of cards in this set. Every color has a Leyline, and they all... Uh, the most interesting thing about them is if you happen to draw them in your opening hand, uh, you can drop them on the battlefield for free right at the start. Uh, wow. This is obviously the blue one. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the white one because it gives you hex proof. The red one punishes your opponent for targeting your permanent. So they're really interesting. It'll be really interesting to see how they uh, come out. I don't know if you saw my face just now. I'm pretty I excited did. here. We've yeah. about this shiny swamp. Just kidding. I'm <laughs> excited about Chandra. Uh, Awakened Inferno. Here she is. Look at there she is. Uh, is she the same as different card? Different, different mm -hmm. card. We have two versions of Chandra here. This is from this the Planeswalker deck that you can kind of use to get started, mm -hmm. or you can just go straight Chandra here. She's got some. Let's let's dive in. These are small letters. I'm going to try to read this. <laughs> uh, the spell can't be countered, so Chandra is making her way in regardless. Uh, each opponent gets an emblem with, at the beginning of your upkeep, this emblem deals one damage to you. Ooh. Uh, Chandra Awakened Inferno deals three damage to each non-elemental creature, and Chandra Awakened Inferno deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker. If a permanent dealt damage this way would die this turn, exile it instead. She is not here to play. Uh, yeah, this card is, is just straight brutal. Uh, you remember that elemental deck I was talking about? This yeah. is an easy finisher in it since it can wipe the board of everything but elementals. Uh, and that, that plus two ability that adds emblems, there's no way to get rid of emblems in this game. So once you have that, it just becomes a ticking, uh, essentially ticking life clock. You are eventually going to die. So any red deck that can afford to play this card has a good reason to play this card. It's very good. I'm sorry, Rollin, if you're watching, I'm keeping that card. <laughs> Rollin called these cards, I want that one. Uh, because, I want the advantage of beating up on all the little kids at the local magic <laughs> tournament. <laughs> You're so kind. Um, we have another ley line here, ley line of combustion. If ley line of combustion is, uh, is in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. Whenever you and or, uh, <clears throat> whenever you and or at least one permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability and opponent controls, ley line of combustion deals two damage to that player. Yeah. Interesting. So this is another one of the ley lines we talked about. Ironically, this one, the most obvious use is uh, as a sideboard card to bring in a, in a mirror match. So you're playing another red deck that's gonna try and lightning strike all your characters, you punish them with this. Uh, but it has other uses too. You bring it in against, um, you know, uh, other any, pretty much anything that targets you and suddenly they're taking damage every time they use one of those spells. So that's always handy. Okay, we've got a, uh, another rare green here, Elvish Reclaimer. Uh, creature, Elvish Reclaimer gets plus two, plus two, as long as there are three or more land cards in your graveyard. Two, tap, and sacrifice a land. Search your library for a land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. All right, so you're going through some mana with this guy. Mm -hmm. but he can get This is a, yeah, this is a classic card. It's a staple of some uh, archetypes of ramp decks that Ramp decks, if you don't know, they're all about just bring out as much land as possible in order to get some huge creature out on like turn three and ruin your opponent's day. Uh, <laughs> Elvish Reclaimer will definitely help you do that for sure. How about some rare land? Temple of Mystery enters the battlefield tapped. When Temple of Mystery enters the battlefield, scry one, tap, add 
a green or blue land. Mm -hmm. So that's, there you go. It's another one of those scry lands we talked about. Uh, blue, out of all the colors, you know, this one's blue-green. Blue lends itself most to control decks and combo decks and the kind of decks that don't really mind waiting a turn to untap their land as much as, you know, a, a red deck that's super aggressive is gonna hate that. Blue-green deck, maybe not so much. All right. Blue rare, here we go. Dungeon Geists, uh, creature spirit flying. When Dungeon Geist enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step for as long as you control Dungeon Geists. This is another card that's making the rounds in those blue-white flying decks. Uh, it doesn't quite remove a creature, but uh, you know, keeping it tapped. Kind of, yeah. yeah. As long as it doesn't have some powerful static ability, it might as well remove. I like this one. This one, I mean, I just like the art on it. It's pretty cool looking. Marauding Raptor. Look at that. It's a, we're going to Jurassic Park today. <laughs> uh, creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Marauding Raptor deals two damage to it. If a dinosaur dealt damage this is dealt damage this way, Marauding Raptor gets a plus two plus zero until end of turn. You know, I, the, I don't, I'm not a red guy. I don't like the self-inflicted crap. Like, uh, you know, some people make it work, not me. You're, you're the opposite of me then. This is, this is one of a few cards that has taken a, the Ixalan block introduced dinosaurs. They were a thing for a little while and then kind of faded, but there are, this is one of a few dinosaur cards in this set that have suddenly made uh, red green and red green black dinosaurs a stomping force all over again. At least until that Ixalan block rotates out in a few months. I'm a white blue guy. I have a feeling I'm gonna like this one. I haven't even looked at it yet. <laughs> Safari Sky, <laughs> Safari Sky's Blade. Uh, you may pay a white and tap four untapped creatures you control with flying rather than pay this creature's mana cost. All right, pretty pretty hefty cost up there. Mm -hmm. So that, that's not, not bad. Uh, flying and lifelink. Other creatures you control with flying have indestructible. Wow. Yeah. See, white takes care of white. <laughs> that's why I like, I like the white and blue so far, if I'm building a deck, yeah. I'm going white and blue. This is a, a perfect uh, finisher for those flying decks because any other deck is gonna have trouble ever casting this card at seven mana with three white. But it's easy to find a way to cheat it out if your entire deck is full of flying creatures that you can tap instead of all that mana. So yeah, definitely a finisher for uh, Zorius Flyers. This guy's gonna be familiar for fans of Magic, Ajani. Ah, uh, yes. Stre uh, strength of the Pride, Legendary Planeswalker, Ajani. Here we go, three abilities. Plus one, uh, you gain life equal to the number of creatures you control, plus the number of Planeswalkers you control. White takes, white loves to have your back. Uh, create a 2-2 white cat soldier, uh, creature token named Ajani's Pride Mate with whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on Ajani's Pride Mate. Uh, and zero, if you have at least 15 or more life, um, then your Starting life total, ex okay, sorry. If you have at least 15 life more than your starting life total, exile a Johnny Strength of the Pride and each artifact and creature your opponent control. Ooh, mm -hmm. that gets tricky. Don't want to get too strong. That, I love this card because a Johnny's Solid. Pride Mate is already a card that exists. It's a favorite in life gain decks because it becomes this massive monster very quickly. And this card just turns it into something you can pump out in multiples, and then once you have enough life, just from gaining life, you, you basically just end the game. Like, game over now, we're done. So this is a really fun card for anyone who likes those kind of white weenie life gain decks. Very cool. Know anyone? <laughs> All right. Uh, we have another version of Chandra here in uncommon form, so we'll just show that off really quickly. Uh, but then let's move on to our rare. Um, Kaikar. Kikar. Kaikar. I don't know. You tell me. Wind's Fury. Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Flying. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, creature or create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. Sacrifice a spirit. Add one red mana to your mana pool. That's cool. That's a cool solid card. Yeah, this one's interesting. Uh, the fact that it costs red mana uh, means it hasn't seen as much play as some of the other flying cards we've seen uh, because it requires a three-color deck. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's still an interesting one if you know the mana fix gets there and we see uh, flying decks spread out to include red as a three-color archetype, then this is definitely a card that could see some play at that point. All right, we got another shiny, another holographic, another foil, whatever you call them. I call them. Uh, holographic, but I know that's, <laughs> people have their terms. And we have Voracious Hydra, Hail Hydra. Uh, trample, 
It's an 0-1 with Trample, solid. Uh, Voracious Hydra enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. When Voracious Hydra enters the battlefield, choose one. Double the number of plus one plus one counters on Voracious Hydra. Voracious Hydra fights target creature. You don't control, and X is the mana cost. So you can make Voracious Hydra pretty strong if mm -hmm. you want to. This is one of those, uh, like many Hydras in the format right now, this is a card that serves as a very good finisher for any mono green stompy or blue green ramp, any kind of ramp deck that gets a lot of mana out quickly. You play this and then you just run over your opponent if they don't have some sort of removal. Throw Voracious Dinosaur out there with uh, that wolf pack mm. and you are going to overwhelm somebody. Um, here we go, a rare black. More Creature. dinosaurs. Zombie dinosaur this time. Best kind of dinosaur. Uh, <laughs> that's the only kind of dinosaurs, isn't it? Oh, RIP dinos. At the beginning of your upkeep, discard a card. 7-6, Zombie Dinosaur, very cheap to play though. So, mm -hmm. good yeah. way to try to get some jabs in there early. Yeah, they have to add that apparent disadvantage mm -hmm. in order to justify putting such a big creature at three mana. But of course, black is very good at manipulating its graveyard. Yep. So it is also very good at turning this apparent disadvantage Ooh. into an advantage I'm very quickly. this one too and I don't even know what it is. Oh, we have two rares in this pack. Ooh. Oh, don't mind if we do. Uh, Thunderkin Awakener, here's our first one. Cost one red and one to play. Haste, whenever Thunderkin Awakener attacks, choose target elemental creature card in your graveyard with toughness less than Thunderkin Awakener's toughness. Return that card to the battlefield tapped and attacking, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Okay, that's, that's an interesting, I mean, for that cool. cheap play, it's not Yeah, bad similar to uh, the Dreadhorde Arcanist, what it did for instance in the last set, but this would be good for elemental decks, of course, because yeah. it's elementals. All right, and now we have our uh, holographic rare. Ooh. Kethis, 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 the hidden hand. He looks like he's in a Harry Potter movie. <laughs> uh, legendary creature, Elf Advisor. Legendary spells that you cast cost one less to cast. That's nice, what a guy. Exile two legendary cards from your graveyard until end of turn. Each legendary card in your graveyard gains. You may play this card from your graveyard. Okay, wow. That's, yeah. But that's a black, white, and green to play. Yeah, so. this is another one I haven't seen too much of yet just because there's not, I haven't seen a deck that it would easily slide into with right. those colors, but if white, black, green, some form of super friends or something like that with a lot of legendary planeswalkers comes into play, I can see this slotting into that pretty easily. Mm. All right, uh, Temple of Malady. Temple of Malady enters the battlefield tapped. When Temple of Malady enters the battlefield, scry one, tap, add a swamp or a forest. So, I mean, that helps you right there mm -hmm. with that card we just pulled. Um, yep. And then our, our shiny feral invocation common. Very cool. Yeah, another one of the scry lands. Uh, Golgari mid-range was a thing for a while. It's kind of faded, uh, but you know, the metagame's about to shift when the new set comes out in the fall. So uh, Golgari is one of those archetypes that tends to come back a lot. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this get played if it does that again. Graf Digger's Cage. Who named this guy Graf Digger? <laughs> like, come on, what were his parents doing to the kid? Imagine him on the first day of school. Uh, creature cards in graveyards and libraries can't enter the battlefield. Players can't cast spells from graveyards or libraries. I mean, with what we're seeing, this is a good way to be prepared for a lot of the types of cards we've just seen mm -hmm. in case you are playing against the black deck or... It's actually a very good card in particular for shutting down the deck I tend to pilot, which is mono red, which right. you would hate. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> its finishing card is experimental friendly, which frenzy, which ex specifically lets you play cards from your library. If this card's on the board, then that pretty much shuts down your deck for the rest of the game. It, it's a killer. Really nerfs things. We've got our black ley line here. I'm just taking a look here. Our, oh, and a shiny. I love them. I'm a sucker, all right, for them. I'm, I'm, a, I have the, I'm a collector. You like shiny things. I like to have a binder full of cards, so. And you just like, want them to glisten in the sun. Yes, yes, absolutely, <laughs> because every now and then you'll be looking for a certain card, you go to the store, it's like $40, and then you find that one person who needs that one holographic card, and they're like, I'll trade you anything for it. And you're like, well, guess what? Deal, because I don't need that, but it looks nice. All right, am I wrong? Am I crazy? Too much? All right, anyway, we have our, sw our black uh, ley line of the void. Uh, if Leyline of the Void is in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. If a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, that's like nice. the uh, 
like the red ley line, this one is actually really good in uh, mirror matches and the like. Anything that uses black or any other color to pull things from the graveyard, uh, even red blue uh, Phoenix decks that cast their Phoenix spells from the graveyard, um, this card shuts those kind of decks down pretty hard. So good one for the sideboard, I would say. Villas, Broker of Blood, legendary creature. Ooh, we got a demon. Um, flying. Swamp and pay two life. These black decks, these red decks. What are you people doing? Uh, target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Whenever you lose life, draw that many cards. All right, well, at least we're getting something out of it. Yeah, that's a very expensive card. So you'd have to play it in a deck with a lot of uh, mana advantage and mana sources and things like that. However, if you do manage to get it on the board, maybe some sort of cast it from the graveyard type uh, trick, uh, then that is a lot of card advantage and a lot of, he doesn't even have to tap, he pays you life, but you don't have to tap him to use that minus one, minus one. So you can whittle away at even indestructible creatures because the minus one, minus one gets around that and take out pretty much anything. I think the only time I've ever used black was back in like the Onslaught Legion days and I had a, a Chroma in there, but it would be like a deck where you hurt yourself, but you gain your life back. I'm, I, I can't go low, I can't pay life. Vintage black, yeah, you wouldn't be good at that if you mm. can't pay life. No, not my thing. Uh, Agent of Treachery, uh, Creature Human Rogue. When Agent, of when Agent of Treachery enters the battlefield, gain control of target permanent at the beginning of your end step. If you control three or more permanents you don't own, draw three cards, okay. See, these blue decks. Blue and white, I think. Or I kind of like green in this too, though. Yeah, this is one of those sneaky blue cards like Hostage Taker and yeah. Mass Manipulation that annoy every player because they turn your own strategy against you. And this one does it even worse because then you gain card advantage for it. It costs seven mana, but man, is this card annoying. I've played against it a couple times. It is, it is not fun. Chandra Nav is Pyro, uh, Pyromancer. So that's just, I mean, that's an uncommon. I'm just showing you guys that there are new ver other versions of the Planeswalker. Mm -hmm. She's um, the only one with the uncommon Planeswalker. Scheming Symmetry, choose two target players. Each of them searches their library for a card, then shuffles it into their library and puts that card on top of it. Did I read that right? I believe so. This is a very specific card. This is a card built for combo decks that want to get a specific set of cards out. Uh, oh, okay. So that they can shut their opponent down. Got it, got it, got it's, it. Uh, so most of the combo decks, at least that I'm aware of right now, tend to be blue or blue-green, so, but if there's a black one out there, it's gonna want Are this Are you color. more of a solid color, or do you like to, uh... I'm never solid. I'm, I Almost never. tend to play, you're talking about like one color or two colors? Yeah. I tend to play one or two, mostly because I hate spending uh, time and money getting dual lands. Right. Uh, but that's mostly it. One or two. Three, it starts to one get tricky. One or two tricky. is, yeah, two mm -hmm. is the match. You just try to do three. But three, yeah, it's too much of a gamble. Yeah, opens up a lot of options though. Yeah, sometimes. Or it could just leave you with nothing to play. Uh, Mystic Forge, rare artifact, costs four to get into, into the game. Uh, you may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast the top card of your library if it's an artifact card or a colorless non-land card. Tap it, pay one life, exile the top card of your library. So this is, you know, every once in a while in Magic, um, very artifact heavy, if not artifact exclusive deck archetype will pop up. Uh, and right now, Magic has been cast, uh, creating a lot of even colored uh, artifacts. Like uh, there's a card in here that's Chandra's Regulator, which is an artifact that's red. So if those artifact heavy archetypes starts to pop up again, this will be a very, very key card for those decks, I would expect. We have another dinosaur. Ooh. Triceratops, if you will. It's just a Ceratops, according to its name. Shifting Ceratops. This spell can't be countered. And it only costs two and two to play. Protection from blue. This creature can't be blocked, targeting blah, blah, blah from blue. Uh, and one green. Shifting Ceratops gains your choice of reach, trample, or haste until end of turn. That's a solid card. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a rare, but it's, it's a solid card for a low cost. It's especially very Medium good. Uh, the metagame right now has a lot of blue decks in it. So... Protection from blue, which by the way, protection went away from a long time, protection from colors. They just brought it back in this set. Uh, but having that protection from blue makes it a very good card uh, in your sideboard against control decks, but it's not a bad card even in your main deck because that green ability makes it very versatile as well. This card uh, makes me nervous. Got a shiny, just gonna, there you go, take a look, <laughs> feast your eyes. 
I didn't do the Irish accent this time for all the shiny cards. That's probably for the best. Yeah, probably. Uh, but we have Planar Cleansing. This is wiping the board. Destroy all non-land permanents. So if you're in a bad spot here, you mm -hmm. need a reboot. Here you go. Um. This is a particularly interesting card because uh, there are a lot of board wiping cards that will take all of the creatures out of the game, but after the last set, there are a lot of Planeswalkers out there that can do right. some damage. This card, though it costs two to three mana more than the typical board wipe, will take care of those Planeswalkers for you in the most efficient way possible. It's just a matter of if you can last long enough to actually cast it. And we have another three color legendary creature. Uh, black, green, and blue. Death Touch and Life Link. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Interesting. So I haven't played with or against this card yet, but with a power like that, where you can double up on enter the battlefield, or not enter the battlefield abilities, but when something comes into play abilities, you have to imagine that uh, the, the big deck brewing types are trying to find a way to exploit this card for everything it's worth, because that's an amazing ability. All right, Galos, Tireless, Pilgrim. When Golos the Tireless Pilgrim enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a land card, put that card onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Uh, two and one of every color. Good luck. Exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn without paying their mana cost. Okay, so this card's great because you can get all of those lands just by having this thing on the field and then... Yeah, this card is already found, up, found home. Load your... Wow. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's an archetype called Gates. It's based on the Ravnica wow. sets. There are common gate lands that are dual lands that come into play tap, but they all have the land type gates. And then you play cards that get bonuses based on how many gates you have out. So you play this card. It's got five toughness, so it slows down all the aggro decks. You're already playing five colors, and it lets you do all this kind of uh, land digging. Uh, having played against it a few times, it is very good and not yeah. fun to be on the other side of the table from. All right, Shared Summons, Green Rare, Instant, two and three. Uh, search your library for up to two creature cards with different names, reveal them, put them in your hand, then shuffle your library. Well, that's, I mean, I like, I, Green is letting you build armies mm -hmm. in, this, in this set. Sure. This card is a little, little expensive, maybe, at five mana. Like, at yeah. that point, I feel like you should probably already have the creatures you need if you're running a creature-heavy deck. It's a good safety, that kind mm -hmm. of card. But if you're putting it in a ramp deck, then you may already have the mana to burn by turn three, and this will make sure you get that card you need to finish your opponent off, uh, as opposed to waiting for it to come up on your top deck naturally. I'm really loving the, uh, the green stuff, the green card. Green has become very popular. It fits into, it's part of the Simic Flash archetype, it's part of the Elementals, it's part of basically everything now. I haven't read this one yet, but we have another green. A Little bit expensive, three and three. Uh, legendary creature, Hydra, Gargos, the Vicious Watcher. Vigilance, Hydra spells you cast cost four less to cast. That's solid, but at mm. that point, you already have at least six. Uh, whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell, Gargos, Vicious Watcher, fights up to one target creature you don't control. And it's an 8-7, so it's pretty much going to be a kill. Yeah, this card, I, I imagine this card will only find homes in like Hy Hydra tribal decks, not that there are a ton of Hydra tribal decks, but decks where Hydras are almost exclusively the creature threats. But the thing, you know, the thing about that four less to cast is that most Hydras have X cast. So you essentially get now X plus four whenever you cast those, like those Hydras we saw before. Just add four more tokens to it because this guy happens to be on the board. Green, Green. telling you. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got an artifact. No color here, one to play. Uh, whenever you discard a card, exile that card from the graveyard, tap it and draw two, or and pay two, or tap two and tap bag of holding. Draw a card and then discard a card. Four and tap, uh, sacrifice bag of holding, return all cards exiled with bag of holding to their owner's hand. That's interesting. It's a very good, uh, tricky kind of card manipulation, card yeah, advantage fit in with your blue deck. for control decks. Yeah, yeah, if you get a card that you can't play it, don't want it yet, want to keep it safe, whatever, you kind of put it aside and call it back later. Uh, which, oh, you know, in the right it, deck is very handy. We just got it again in shiny form. Uh -oh. Ha ha, you know, I'm happy. Shiny back. Ooh, who wants to trade? 
<laughs> You're too excited about these shiny. Oh, and we got you. that was we have another rare. Uh, Drekaseth, Maw of Flames. Look at this dragon. That's some good art. I like mm -hmm. that art. Take a look at that. I like it. That's good stuff. All right, flying. Whenever Drakaseth, uh, Maw of Flames attacks, it deals four damage to any target and three damage to each of up to two other targets. So, wow. Yeah, That's so. That's a solid card. At seven mana, this is probably uh, too big of a card for like a mono red deck, but Grawl aggro and Grawl mid range, which is red green. Uh, has been a thing for a while now. It has mana ramp as part of it with Land of War Elves and things like that. Uh, so it can get to this and then use this as a finisher to fly over its opponents and just decimate everything on the board while doing so. I think it's solid, man. You get that thing in play. So mm -hmm. They're gonna try to take it out. That's what Grill does, really. Atemsis, all seeing. It is blue, a legendary creature, a sphinx, if you will, flying. Two, a blue, and tap, draw two cards, and then discard a card. Whenever a Tempsis, all-seeing, deals damage to an opponent, uh, you may reveal your hand. If cards with at least six different converted mana costs are revealed this way, that player loses the game. Whew. I'm building a green and blue deck. It's, yeah. it's final. I'm building a green and blue deck. Yeah. But I love all the white cards, too. This is tough. We've got a lot of good green and blue pulls here, though. Yeah, I mean, like, this card is good for card advantage. Uh, it's expensive, but gives you card advantage, but then it's just a matter of manipulating your hand to get exactly the right, you know, a full house that shuts down right. the game, essentially. Discard, repeat, mana cost, save yep. the different ones. That, that's, uh, that's some fun stuff. We got another good blue one. Oh, 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 I'm messing with Brian now. Uh -uh. All right, here we go. Uh, Mu Yanling, Sky Dancer, Legendary Planeswalker. Mm -hmm. Until your next turn, up to one target creature gets minus two, minus zero, and loses flying. Creature of a 4-4, four, four, create a 4-4 blue, a four, four blue elemental bird creature token with flying. And uh, you get an emblem with islands you control, have tap, draw a card. Wow, but that cost eight, so, I mean. That's the ultimate. At that point, it's pretty much game over, as it tends to be the case with most ultimate abilities for Planeswalkers. Right. But yeah, she has already started to find a home in those flying decks we talked about because it pumps out flying creatures and also if your opponent has a flying creature, uh, shuts that flying creature down. But it, you know, just common blue control decks like it too because it slows down your opponent's creatures by giving them minus two. Uh, you know, most of the cards in a mono red deck don't have more than two to begin with. And then if you last long enough, you can draw your whole deck. Uh, so yeah, she's got, she, I'd expect her to see play in a, several different archetypes. Pretty much anything that uses blue can use her. We've opened our last pack. Oh no. We've opened our last pack. Uh, and it's a white, it's a rare white, so that white deck is looking real good right now. Um, Loxodon, life changer. When Loxodon life changer enters the battlefield, you may have your life total become the total toughness of creatures you control. White loves taking care of other white creatures, man. Five and a white, locks on life changer, gets plus X, plus X until the end of turn, where X is your life total. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, six mana isn't, isn't a little, it's more than a little, but, you know, there's an old no. saying in Magic that life gain's nice, but it doesn't win you the game, because it's the true. object is to, it's true. You need to take to... down your opponent, but between if, cards like if this... If you start gaining life, if, uh -huh. listen, green and white, you start gaining life, and you put together your little wolf army, and you, your Hydra army. Pair this with that Ajani we played earlier that just yeah. win, basically wins the game if you get your life total high enough. I just built my deck. Gaining life can win you the game. Hope Rollin doesn't, Rollin, who works here, wanted some of these cards. Hope he doesn't like white and green cards because I'm building a white and green deck after this. Uh, this set is available now. If you have questions, if you want to see any more cards, we have obviously a whole stack of commons and uncommons that we didn't go through because we would have been here all day. Um, but we're happy to run through those with you. Hit us up on Twitter or in the comment section. Uh, you can hit Jamie up at Jamie Lovett. Uh, you can hit me up at Brandon Davis BD. And like I said, we'll be at San Diego Comic Con uh, this weekend. We're, I'm heading out on Wednesday. We have some interviews about Magic the Gathering with uh, uh, some, some powerful folks from Wizard. I don't want to spoil yes. anything. And there is a Magic the Gathering panel. Mm -hmm. They will be announcing. Kind of they will be announcing uh, that fall set, which is going to start the new storyline. It'll be the set that brings in rotation. So that will be big, big Magic news when it happens on Saturday. And we'll have it for you on ComicBook.com. Any questions? Let us know. Thanks for watching, everybody. Sweet, dude. These are these cards are killer. 